Hi everyone, this is Matt, and welcome to the Real Gamer School Podcast. This week I'm joined by Tarragon, uh, uh, Freem, and Cre- wait, 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 who wrote this script? Oh, hi, why are you guys wearing ski masks, and what's with the what's with the machetes? Oh god, no. Hey, look, no, 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 like, hey, this is my podcast, I'm not letting you any- oh god, no, 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 oh, god, no, no, get off me! Good morning, good evening, or good day, and welcome to the ZZ Podcast, the home for Xbox achievement hunters and gamer score junkies. I'm your host, Brendan Freeman. Thank you so much for listening. At ZZ, we love gaming, and in particular, grabbing achievements and gaining gamer score. We do news, reviews, and interviews. It's about achievements. We'll unlock it. Today, I'm joined by Randy. How are you doing, Randy? Uh, you know what? I'm uh, I'm doing here. all right. You know, it's Did, it's d- been it's been a while, off? and it's it's a yeah, dust the cobwebs off the mic, literally off the <laughs> mic stand. Beautiful, and, and uh, then that chortle you hear in the background—that is, of course, Terrigan. How are yeah. you doing? I'm good. I'm good. This has been a long time. <laughs> it has been um, although, ages. Yeah. So, I mean, I I don't have cobwebs on my my microphone, fortunately, but uh, yeah, it's um, good to be back. Well, your RGS listeners just heard an episode from me uh, at one twenty one, I think. I don't know what it was, but it was just a short while ago, and it was so much fun recording with you guys. Uh, well, Cam and Matt, um, I absolutely loved it. I, I still try to dabble every once in a while, but boy, it's nice not to have the burden of editing shows and, and being a regular guest, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, that's that's something I don't miss. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yep. I, I, you know, it, it was yeah. it was fun to do it for a while. It was cool to learn and see it, but yeah, I mean, it, it was it was certainly. Uh, for sure, work, I feel like we're getting least. a little bit of ahead of ourselves because this is not, in fact, the Z to Z podcast. It is the Z to Z reunion show. Um, you know, we're 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 hearkening back to the original three that started. Of course, we finished the show uh, in 2018, and, and uh, we had Prue as as one of our other co-hosts. But the three of us were the ones who got this thing kicked off uh, way back in uh, uh, 2016. Um, I know. I I was actually just just thinking that before we started in in my my uh, bedroom from my my first apartment back back in uh, Northern California. I was thinking. I mean, it wasn't in there for long because I moved to New York shortly after. But you know, it got it kind of got me thinking about it again and how that feels like forever ago. Yeah, it was, it's. We were just kind of looking back over the history, and of course, we we all, we started Z to Z on the kind of the ashes of the Achievement Hounds podcast. Um, and it's just been funny, kind of digging through the achievement hounds history as well. That's uh, and, and going back through a bunch of the, a bunch of the seeds for a lot of the contests and even the random to do list that sort of, um, are still going. Obviously, uh, yeah. it's been been fun actually looking at that stuff. For sure, that's where I got my original chops for doing contest stuff and burrowed my way into true achievement staff. Uh, through messing around <laughs> in those forums, so yeah, we'll, we'll let's touch base on that uh, in a little bit. But I think we should uh, set the stage by letting these listeners know who the hell we are, uh, because they've they likely don't know what this show was because well, it it's an old show. Um, so Terrigan, why don't you uh, regale us with some of the uh, the Z to Z history as our resident statistician and uh, with your almanac of knowledge? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> the pressure! <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, so uh, Achievement Hounds podcast um, was a thing, and yep. it slowly stopped being a thing um and that's natural podcasts come and go um i think the hosts were sort of gradually losing interest in gaming gaming uh, gaming for gamer score in general and they got busy had jobs and so on and so forth right totally fine um so in the absence of that freem and i um started discussing uh, i can't remember exactly how we started really talking about this but well, we started, started... i do do you remember yeah. if we had started the community show at the achievement hounds Ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the Achievement Hounds community show, um, I it was me and Griffey95, Oz Buffanatic, 
or Oz Bundy Boy. Um, who else was on that? I'm trying to remember. It was kind of a rotating group for a while, and then and I became more of a permanent host. Um, and, and you had come on on a few of those, and it it became abundantly clear that a it was super fun to do, and b the recording quality was dog crap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so uh, you had reached out I'd, to I'd me. F- I'd forgotten. I'd yeah. forgotten all about the community show. Yep. It- well, I I remember that. I mean, maybe I'm getting too far ahead of us, but you know when when uh, you had kind of proposed Z to Z to me and, and brought it up to me that that was kind of a big. Yeah, I, I remember so. that being very important when when it was discussed that that the audio mm. quality was you know at at a you know, near professional or professional yep. kind of level because it's awful to listen to terrible yeah, quality I've podcasts. Dropped podcasts that have dropped their audio. It's just, yeah. Um, and I think I even, I think I bought you a microphone frame. If I you bet you did. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Oh, you, that you was pre Patreon, anyway. yeah, man. Yeah, that was all frame, but... Terrigan money. <laughs> I'm still using it right now. It's in my hand. It's beautiful. Yep, me too. Uh, I'm still using the same mic I got around. I, th- I think it's all the same. It's actually the ex- exact same model. We've all got the same. Oh, and I've, I have audio, audio. sent this yeah. to people as recommendations. I think it's beautiful, and for its price, is great. It's super economic, yeah. and it works just yeah. great. It's the uh, Audio Technica um, a- ATX ATR, ATR 2100 USB, yeah. um, and there's a couple others in that sort of speed. N- not sponsored by uh, Audio Technica, by the way. No. <laughs> No, unfortunately, yeah. our, our we we never yeah we never like got sponsor our sponsorships up and going, but we did have a Patreon that was uh, relatively successful, and and you know a lot of people who enjoyed listening to our shows, um, they have since splintered into both the Real Gamer Score community and the Achievement Hunting One Hundred and One community. You can find remnants uh, in both of those communities of of people who still harken back to the old Z to Z days. Um, so it's fun that we we had spawned I mean, a couple I, of communities I, I, out of it. I, I would say our Patreon was more than a little bit successful, personally. I mean, I I think the fact that we were more than self sustaining was pretty yeah. was pretty cool. You know, we we had enough money left over, and then some to you know we we paid for everything we used, and you know we gave out. I think a, we did a full price game every month, right? I think so. I don't I remember at, at the peak. I can't I can't yeah. I can't remember my bills from. A month ago, so I sure as hell can't remember what yeah. I paid two years ago, <laughs> three years ago. Um, so yeah, we had a, a 150 episode run, uh, so a good three years worth of shows. Um, ups and downs. We had a few interviews, a couple of fun things. Um, but let's 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 go back to what you were talking about earlier, Terry, again about the the achievement uh, the achievement hounds podcast. Um, you had said you you were dipping around in their in their forums a little bit. What what kind of treasure did you unearth in, in the archives? That's like that's like uh, that's guess, almost dark web. Is their web is their yeah, website still up? up? It's it's not hugely functional. It, nope, it's <laughs> pretty it's, bad, it's... and it's full of uh, bots <laughs> who have great deals on uh, on sneakers and yep. uh, sports Ooh. paraphernalia. So if you're interested, I need I need me some new sneakers. Yep. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, so it was just just interesting to see some of the like the names, like well, Osbundy Boys, all over the place still. Um, oh yeah, which is uh, interesting. Um, yeah, so many people I've forgotten actually, um, but uh, I think probably the ne- one that's nearest to my heart really is the um, the potentially endless bean dive. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but it was uh, a challenge um, put forward by Moronic Cow to basically dive a game each day and outlast everyone else doing that. Um, that's still going. <laughs> so, um, it's been yeah, it's been eight years now. It's all, it'll be eight years on Feb 28th, um, so I'm not sure when this episode's going to come out, but yeah, eight, eight years on February 28th of 2021. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... But, how many? How many are still? Uh, going? There are two that are officially still in it, and there's a third who um, did miss a day, but he's still diving anyway, just because they're all good friends now. So he's kind of diving yeah. in solidarity. So it's down to the final two, waiting for that uh, that 1600 MSP prize. Yeah, be, be well earned. <laughs> <laughs> that is just wild, and uh, and and like we had said. I- 
Um, it was kind. Of, sorry, just one ahead. thing on that. It was kind of funny. I was looking looking around uh, probably two one or two years ago. I was actually looking around to see if it was possible to actually buy a sixteen hundred point MSP card somewhere because I just wanted to hold on to that for <laughs> the endless bean dive as the prize. <laughs> it's it's. I was not able to find one unfortunately. I could find some I, close, but um, I have a two hundred point card <laughs> that is not redeemed. But yeah, I think I was I able to find that... some eight. 800s maybe or 1000s but i wasn't able to get a like a specifically a 1600 which is what the uh what the prize was oh, but... what the prize was for <laughs> yeah that's awesome uh you had mentioned the contests that uh that were there and and i know um one that is particularly interest to you that that is still going these days is the random to-do list was born at the achievement hounds yeah i think it might have been i don't know if it was actually specifically born there um I know Facial Fleur came up with the idea. I don't know whether he came up with it in the Achievement Hounds. It's quite possible he did. Um, but certainly the birth of what is now the modern random to-do list was uh, definitely from the Achievement Hounds podcast days. Um, cause Facial Fleur was obviously the one who made the original one, which was literally go to your, ra- go to your achievements to-do list and just hit random 100 times. Yeah. <laughs> this, was, this was before you could select number of achievements or the types of achievements. It was literally right. just press that button. Press that button 100 times. <laughs> um, uh, and it was meant to be a yearly contest back then. Um, I, think, I don't think anybody actually managed to complete the 100 in a year. I don't think so it's either. And I, 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 think, yeah. I think the longest really anyone actually stayed on it was like three months i, I think you, yeah. you just got burnt out by that point and, and and it was very clear to us that just making it go that long wasn't wasn't going to work out so uh i i i think that love the changes that we made um and and the the current iteration is just awesome so yeah it's 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 really good i, I mean i don't actually i'm not even taking part in it myself but it's just it's the amount of um uh, interest uh, in it um, has been so pretty much solid uh, ever since we kind of got it to its modern status now um, and there are a heap of people who really love it including yourself frame um, yeah it's it's for the people who are in it it's extremely popular um, and that so it's a good feeling that we've, I've made something that works as well as it does and the people really like so and it's, how, how long has it been four years in that version I forget for your version, yeah, I think yeah. like three and a half at least, maybe full four. Yeah, I don't, I don't hundred percent know. Um, I was thinking of some of the other stuff. So that's like I mentioned it. It was where I got into getting like these these contest ideas and and putting forth some things to challenge the community. Um, I had a weekly scavenger hunt where yep. uh, you you would. Every week, I'd, I'd put up a like a theme, um, and and you'd have to get an achievement with that theme. And I remember that was the first time where uh, I truly angered my wife um, playing video games because I I needed an achievement that had the word green in it. Um, it must have been any color, but I was going for one in green, and it was the game so many me, and I thought it was it was a low ratio, so I thought it was real close, and it. Oh man, I was up till two a.m. going for that thing, and she came down and just steam coming out of her ears. She was so mad that I had stayed up that late. Um, but yeah, those those were great. I, they went for quite some time. I think I did like a hundred plus weeks of those in uh, in the in the community there. And then another one that you'll see uh, that actually still exists over at the uh, the Achievement Hunting One Hundred and One podcast is the uh, the Gamer Tag Challenge. Uh, used to be with birthdays, mm. um, and there, there have been all sorts of iterations for that one. But that is still going on over there. Uh, I, I partake in it every month, where you gain, a, you unlock an achievement in a game that starts with the the letter, you know, for whoever's gamer tag it is. Uh, still super fun. I really like doing that. <laughs> for what it's worth, it's it's yeah, what the, the fug this month. Um, <laughs> he, I know he's in the uh, the RGS community. So. Um... Yeah, those those even uh, in the in GTask, the Great True Achievement Score Challenge. Uh, whenever those kind of alphabet or spelling out ones come up, they're super popular, even if people aren't generally going for bonuses. So, um, and I think a lot of that uh, that enthusiasm is certainly shown in the uh, the old uh, old gamer tag challenges from way back. Yeah, and then the, the last one I want to mention, and this thing, this thing was nuts. 
I don't know if you guys remember the assassination gameplay or the assassination contest I did. And uh, yeah, you you mentioned that as we were kind of looking through the forums. No, I I remember you did them. I can't remember the specifics of it. So this um, specific one, it really was. So this was the the nugget that had started UHH for me. Um, so so for those of you who know UHH in the uh, in true achievements, right? I pitched that to Rich. Um, you know, as something that they could actually do, but it, it spawned from this assassination game. Uh, but what ended up happening when we were doing assassination, essentially the rule, it, it was every single person, and I don't know if you guys played this when you were in, in high school or whatever, um, we used to do this, and you'd pull a name from a hat, right, and that was the person you needed to go, quote-unquote, kill, and you'd shoot them with a Nerf gun or a disc gun or whatever, um, and if you got them, then you took whatever name they had, um, right? And so it's just these big, you know, s- sneaking its own tail type chain. Uh, so that was how the the assassination game was set up. So all these different gamers had to get the person in front of them. And so you would find 20 achievements that were the same on both sides, right? So the person attacking you... This is sounding familiar. Yeah, pretty <laughs> interesting, huh? So the person attacking you would have 20 achievements they'd be going after. And you could go after them first to defend yourself... From that person, uh, yeah. And every yep. time you did, you, you'd have to re-roll them. And what what ended up happening? This is this is where I, uh, you know, quickly learned that this wasn't going to work in in a larger scale. Was uh, most people just ended up playing defensively then? And in order to get things going, I just changed the rules like every week uh, because people were just sitting there doing nothing. So I was like, okay, well, if you don't do anything, I'm going to start taking hit points away. Uh, okay, so that's not working. Mm. And there's achievements that you don't want to go after. Okay, uh, how about if I give you the ability to re-roll them? Okay, I'm going to introduce gear. And so it's like I threw in sniper rifles and hand grenades yeah. and all sorts of <laughs> random crap. So, but then, I mean, then power creep stuck in, and it's like people were just trying to get a bunch of grenades so that then, you know, if anyone came to them, they could just launch a lobby of grenades and do a bunch of damage without actually unlocking any achievements. It eventually devolved into complete chaos. And it may, some would say it started <laughs> in complete chaos, but it, it devolved into it. Um, but that that was the the initial birthplace of UHH. Uh, I can't. And it all it, and and, and <laughs> this whole the whole thing that that I found out while doing this is, and this is this this just feeds into my personal view on contests and challenges is. You want to make it accessible to everybody. As much fun as it is, and I look, I love planting and his GTAC, but gosh, that is such a grind and so awful. Yeah, I and cannot yeah, and compete that, at that level. Yeah, well, and it's been and ongoing that... and perfected for so many years now, right? Because <laughs> that was like the first big contest, right? Pretty and then much. now you've got team, you, you know, you've got veterans of you know however many years and multiple wins and things it's just you know you have yeah. to be you have to be at such a high level to realistically compete at that point yeah although uh the depending on on the variations like this this year's variation is um true achievement difference um which has significantly changed helpful. the game yeah um but also the sheer prolific amounts of the rat games and sometimes use and the zero to one hour completions has also really changed that entire contest. Yeah. Um, uh, but there was just on on the on discussing those kind of contests. There was another contest. I can't remember what it's called, um, but it's towards the end of the year and it's essentially like a month and you've got to get as much gamer score as you can get. I know Redemption Denied took part in it. Um, GSL. Do you guys remember what that one was? Um. Could the be yeah. score league um, or whatever. I don't. It, I think it was on an off-site though. Yeah, it was somewhere else. Um, yeah, I forget the specifics. I'm just wondering if that went longer or was around longer than the GTASC. Yeah, I don't know. But that was only a month. I know planting has always done the full year until this last this yep. this current one. That's that's only a half a year, which which I think is a good change. Um, not that it changes yeah, your sure. burnout. I mean, you're you're still you're still <laughs> absolutely destroying yourself to get this stuff done. But um, I yeah. So so that again, like I was saying, that that shaped my view of hey, when you design a contest, make it so that everyone can participate. And that's that's really why uh, you know contests like the Twelve Days of Christmas, right? It, you don't have to be mm. the most prolific gamer to do those contests. 
uh, you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. Last uh, this last one actually for the uh, the link frog day twelve. You know you can the way TA had set it up, and and I didn't realize this till uh, some other people were doing this is that they would show you the letter that was chained, and so you could design it so your letters could spell something. And so mm-hmm. my personal yeah. challenge was to spell all the badges uh, because I am part <laughs> of the, the elite club that has all the badges. And so, boy, that was super stressful. I made it way harder than it needed to be, but it was fun, you know, and I got this own personal little challenge involved. And, um, you know, I know Chin Doctor is, is famous for his Chin Doctor difficulty where he would try to do the real song. Um, just absolutely insane, but, you know. Yeah, so the Warboats, yeah, Warboats as well. Chin Doctor asked me to make a, um, a user script for Warboats that basically hid most of the information that was there. <laughs> so not only did he have to guess, he had to work out what the achievement was and the game from the picture. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, he was a bit crazy. That's funny. Um, yeah, he didn't do it this year because you know, he's been pretty flat out with work. But yeah, if anybody wants hard mode, let me know. <laughs> Perfect. Next one. Perfect. Yep. I think uh, you know. So so moving into as we transition into the Z to Z podcast, I, I think ultimately uh, we should probably let people know who the hell we are, um, as opposed to just these remnants of these ancient forums that that were there. Uh, Terrigan, I think people pretty much know you in this community. I don't know if you have anything else you want to share or. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, well, surprisingly, um, given that I haven't been on the show that regularly for the last little while, um, some people probably don't know that I'm one of the founders of this particular podcast, Real Gamer Score. Um, so I founded it along with um, Chin Doctor, um, so Kirby, and Professor Pluto, um, Alex. So we started it. Um, uh, it was around the time that ZZ was sort of finishing up, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's me, pretty much. Uh, I run contests. I do cool shit. <laughs> um, that's basically me. Um, I think most people already know me from from the RGS forums or the RGS Discord, at least. So yeah, and uh, I did a you pro- crash you pro- course myself last last time I was on this show or whatever. So you know, not not a great deal has changed, but. Uh, just as a recap, um, you know, yeah, the ZZ stuff. And then I am currently on staff uh, at TA doing contests, uh, technically been, planting been, the manager. I, but Yeah, I've been on and off staff there as yep. well, uh, not, not currently. So I've been pitching – actually, I've got a couple of ideas here that are gaining some steam. So I'm hoping uh, – I, I, like I, I think I said, I'm the idea man. I, I can't stick around and do hmm. anything. I will just spit out ideas and help them work. And that let everyone else make it work. Uh, so uh, I like yeah, to I think, put my I think feet a lot up on of the our, table. Yeah, I think a lot of you, you pitched quite a few contest ideas to me that I then made work. I'm pretty sure <laughs> over the yep. years. Um, but I think doing that as well just really influenced or shaped. I think a, a thing that we agree on about contests is yeah that accessibility thing, but also just make it easy for people if they're not having fun to be able to recover um, yep. and start having fun again. And I think that. Uh, particularly with the random to do list, that's really um, what brought up the whole re rolls yep. policy. Because um, there's nothing worse than getting stuck on an achievement or getting a bunch of games on your list that are just you don't want to play. Um, so yeah, and I, I sort of tried to bring that across to true achievements as well. It's uh, with with limited success, but um, yeah, we're getting. But there. yeah, that that yeah. So that really um, the early work with you, I think, really shaped. Uh, shape that kind of thinking about contests for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry that was a carry. Carry on. <laughs> no, and that's. I mean, that's ultimately probably the most important stuff. I spend most of my time with the uh, achievement hunting one hundred and one crew in that community, and I've got a couple standing game nights with uh, you know some some gamers that that are between both discords. Um, actually, we have a uh, normal Sunday night game that I'm. Uh, bypassing here to record with uh, with what the fuck and Koosh Moose and uh, somebody named Beer Me, we play World War Z because I, I I'm a big fan of zombies. Uh, I think I've mentioned that before, and so uh, we are going through. We are trying to do the insane runs on that. Uh, boy, that's hard. That is a difficult In game. Fact, 
Your love of zombies was actually part of the reason why the show was called Z to Z. That's right. That's right. Z for zombie and Z for the ZZ Urban Spaceman. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly how it started. I still have that T-shirt with the logo. I love that logo that Grug put together. That thing yep. is so cool. Uh, so that brings us to you, Randy, the 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 person that uh, ha- has yet to be on the the RGS show. Uh, from my knowledge, you uh, completely got wiped off the face of the earth. So uh, I don't know anything yeah, about you anymore. I mean. I mean, yeah, that that is kind of what happened. <laughs> um, yeah. So after after kind of the Z Z wind down, I kind of, uh, re reevaluated my, my stance, my, not my stance, but my, my way I play games, my way I approach games. But, um, it, for those of you that may remember me or don't know me, what I was known for was, uh, the guy that hates games. That's right. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I complain, you know, I was rain, rain cloud Randy. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I still have cynical. that logo of you in your gray shirt with a big rain cloud head. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have it somewhere too, actually. Um, which is, yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, I bought the uh, the rain cloud gray Xbox One Slim that I still use, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, uh, skeptical of the hype. Um, sure. yep. Founder of the Lion Engine. Uh, founder yep. of the Lion. Yes. Uh, I, well. Coined the phrase. I didn't. Lunch. I didn't make. I didn't make it up. I just uh, beat the dead horse. That's right. Um, <laughs> because it was, I, I will give my friend that uh, that came up with that credit for it. Uh, yeah, the the lie engine. Uh, you know, I I did not forgive. Uh, do w- would not easily forgive misleading developers. Uh, you know that kind of stuff. What's your take on cyberpunk? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, no. Actually, you know. <laughs> Like I said, I I changed. I I've uh, reevaluated my my stance on on things, and uh, I've I've been trying to uh, to have a more positive view on things. Um, but actually, you know what? I I think the whole cyberpunk thing was totally overblown. E- even even playing the base console version, because I I don't have a Series X. I don't have a one X. I am still playing on a on a slim, and I I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I mean, yes, it's not perfect. Certainly, I mean there there were there were bugs, but it was by no means unplayable in my experience. That is and, shocking and I, to hear you say that, I, isn't it? <laughs> right, isn't it? Um, no, I I've I was I have I haven't finished it yet, but I've been really enjoying it. Is it because you're on the yeah, West think... Coast now, and you're all a surfer dude, laid no, back, no, and no, you're just no. <laughs> no care in the world, no. brah. <laughs> no, well, uh, I I did start taking antidepressants, but it's oh, okay. uh, it, was well, before, it was before that. Okay. <laughs> it was before that. So, so um, I'm interested with um with, with your experiences with Cyberpunk. Uh, a lot of the issues I think on the like lower end consoles was partly. Uh, frame problems, so fr- frame drops and things like that, but also yeah. just loading, mm-hmm. texture, texture loading. Um, texture loading was apparently just yeah. shock, shockingly bad. So, um, how we- and it's it's really weird too because it seems like just even person to person. I mean, unless all of the takes that you see online are exceptional. I mean, I have to believe at least partially that some people are actually running into all the issues they claim to be running into. But it, it seems that the difference from person to person is even on the same consoles, like like not the same individual console, but like person one, two, and three are all playing on their, you know, sl- Xbox One Slim. You know, person two might be borderline unplayable. Person one, three, it's fine. So, mm. you know, the, the first day... Um, the frame rate was consistently low, like definitely pre like day one patch frame rate was consistently noticeably low, but you know, it's, it, you know, it's like, it's, it's like playing on N64 or something, right? Like it, you, it would be kind of like <laughs> locked in at like 20 frames, yep. which didn't look great, but was fine. You know, you get used to it. It's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not going to give it five stars, but you know it's it's far from the it's, it's no, it's unplayable no broken state yeah <laughs> and and then when they released that that kind of like hot patch like a couple of days later that issue was basically gone 
um, for me anyway. I mean, yes, there's still drops here and there if there's a lot going on or you're driving really fast or something, but mm. um, I think that, for was, the most that part, was some of the stuff that Digital Foundry found was just driving very quickly through through it was uh, the big stress test because it has to yeah. load in so many textures mm-hmm. for all the buildings and do it very quickly. I wonder yeah. if, um, do you use uh, like an SSD or something like that? Nope. Or are you just no, using it a standard is a, hard drive? It is a very stock one uh, uh, S, and I, I mean, I'm using the internal drive. I don't have an external drive connected to it, but yeah, it's it's the same console I've been using for I don't know three, three, four, or five years now. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, sorry, it's total digress. I was just kind of curious what your experiences were. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, and, and I mean, so far, I, I suspect, you know, I will probably revisit it in a year or so on PC playing on, like, kind of, I'll probably look at upgrading to a ray tracing card and playing it that way because it looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, I've people uh, on the highest end compare that people who are playing it on pc and then seeing it on xbox and thinking this is like a totally different game <laughs> it's just the um uh, I, the I don't i don't know if i I'd, I'd call it that like i'd say it's that mm-hmm. drastic i mean it's still even even in the you know the lowest state you can play it at basically like in with the base console i st- it looks gorgeous like, yeah really. I, I think there's things like um they have to turn down crowd density for lower lower performing systems, and I think that also makes a lot of it. Um, so on PC, high end PC, you just got many more people walking around and cars doing things, mm. and so it's just much more alive, um, or the the feeling of being alive in the city. So I, I guess it's things like that, and then the ray tracing and things like that are just kind of uh, cream on top. Yeah, um, I'm still waiting. They haven't yet released a like a full ray tracing compatible version on um, on Series X. So I'm still waiting for that, and I've, I've I've completed the game bar one achievement that was buggy. Um, so I'm kind of waiting for that update and for DLC before I go back to it. I thought the game was great, actually. Um, bugs aside, um, I, I, I got to say though, uh, there was a point in the story when the bugs were starting to get so noticeable that they were really distracting from the story. It was really immersion breaking. So it's just sort of like you're getting through this super serious part of the game and then someone's like floating through the sky and you think, yeah, are there wieners <laughs> yep. hanging out? Yeah. Yep. And then that car just exploded for no reason. Okay. Right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I've got a couple of screenshots of a couple of video captures of that and it was like, literally I was just walking down the, walking down the street and this guy walks into a car, sits there and the car just explodes. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Or... <laughs> it was like the only reason I really noticed it was because the car was there and I thought oh, I'll just get into that car and drive away and I couldn't and I'm like huh that's odd and then somebody walked into it and it went boom and it was like oh okay <laughs> not sure if that was scripted or not but <laughs> sure. that's funny uh, and, and another another one as well was like um, trees I was just like looking looking around and then these trees like they were palm trees basically just did like a complete bend over to the ground slowly and then slowly bent back up again and i'm like that's odd <laughs> and it was um it's like they broke 3d so you know how uh 3d is like in 2d world 3d is kind of you know um faked essentially but just like mm-hmm. they broke the 3d <laughs> like they they just weren't mapping into the same sort of uh yeah uh xyz as they were meant to be so it just looked really weird um hmm. i've got to got to cripple that too but yeah both the bugs in the game. I, I, I hope that they finish or comp- fix a lot of those bugs because it really did start to break the immersion towards the end of the game, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I definitely say, like, after the second patch, most of the issues that... I, I mean, again, it's not perfect. Like, like there's still stuff that gets stuck in the ground you can't pick up and, mm. and things here and there, but they really did a lot. In, yeah, and they're, they're certainly like, making it but better. I, um, yeah. It didn't help that their publicity on it was just shite. Um, yeah, and it, and it was, I I think, totally unfair. I, I I do not believe that. I mean, yes, it was. Uh, yes, it wasn't what was promised necessarily, but like at the same time, I, I don't know. It, it wasn't nearly as bad as it was made out to be. Yeah, I guess. There's probably just different people had different experiences with it because there were some really bad things. Um, and yeah, even Digital Foundry did some 
some reviews of it on the base base code day one patch and yeah that was it was pretty bad <laughs> yeah but well still, and, it, and and like i said earlier too like it really seems like almost arbitrarily some mm-hmm. consoles just couldn't run it as well as others for no apparent reason and and i don't understand why that's the case if it was the case but it, it seems like the experience that i've had is quite good versus the reports of others that are like i literally cannot play this game <laughs> yeah super <laughs> weird yeah uh randy you are also quite well known for your love of Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. Oh, yes. Um, we, the old Graw. Graw. How's that? Do you have the series completion yet? Are, are you all done with it? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I I just have the one the one done. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever do the series completion. Do you remember but... that uh, when you completed that game and we had, was it Christian on from? Yeah, I do. That, I Christian do. Allen. Yep. yep. That, was that, was a, a, that was a cool episode. That was fun. And I, yeah, I completed it on while we recorded too yep. i do remember that did you it was, um, the, it was the tutorial wasn't it you had to do it was it the first level or something? no no it was just <laughs> it was just one of the levels like because yeah. you could you could play with cheats so like you can just make yourself invincible and just walk through the whole level <laughs> so that's that's what i did i think i was just right at the end and then walked through the finish or whatever are you, do you doing any other leaderboard do you have any other delusions no, of know, doing those i've uh i've kind of retired from that world a little bit you know it still pulls me in now and then but i guess yeah that that was another thing that i was kind of known for was uh doing the ridiculous yeah. um i mean i guess most recently it was probably uh both versions of grand theft auto 5 uh mm-hmm. myself and uh a couple others that may be known uh, fug and and prue and one one of our other friends uh right. did the uh uh the criminal mastermind on the um what's called the doomsday heist which was the last set of achievements that was released for gta 5 and for those that don't know it requires you to complete the whole heist in order with the same group without dying once um and you have to do that with two Sounds people easy. three people and then four <laughs> people so not only do you have to do it once you have to do it three minimum of three times um so we we were doing that for Jeez, I mean, it must be year, years at this point. I think we worked on that. <laughs> uh, I mean, Yikes. very high ratio. I mean, it, it's yep. still one of my highest ratio achievements, higher than some of my leaderboard stuff uh, for good reason. Um, but yeah, leaderboards yeah. were kind of my thing. Kind uh, of reached two leaderboards, I think, reset relatively recently. But I think you've already got They those. did not. They, they did, did not, not reset. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I like I said, it, it pulls me in once in a while. <laughs> uh, so I get the scoop on uh, on what's going on with, with people doing that. Um, so yeah, they, they did not reset. That was, uh, I think that was a joke post. Um, right. But... That being said, they were taken recently by a group, uh, um, and they they were able to pass it out to some people. Unfortunately, the uh, I think current there was some drama. the current leader, yeah, the current leader <laughs> discovered that he had been overtaken about a week in, which meant that now they take the the original estimate. I think was I don't know twenty to thirty hours per person, which then shot up to like. 80 or 90 hours a person or something uh, I, I don't know if it was if it was quite gross. that much but but it was like it was a a you know not a non non-existent time investment to get the leaderboard achievements but for a completionist 20 to 30 hours to get what was an unobtainable achievement effectively uh is is pretty reasonable and so yeah boot. <laughs> yeah yeah so unfortunately there was some back and forth there i don't know what the current status is but um yes yeah, so there, there was a a very dedicated group that put in a lot of hours to to take that that's wild so effectively yeah, so. You, you play for fun now yeah that's I was right say, i do you, do you, you you still play a girl for fun no no <laughs> did you I, ever uh, play girl for fun i i did uh no I well no that's not true. When I first got my my 360, I did play Grow for fun, uh, and that's how it got on my tag. 
I got that that viral assassin achievement. Uh, and and, uh, and Scott, Scott, you'll tag forever. And there it is. Yeah, and yep. there it is. So, and then, of course, and I before, and before you know it, you've got eight, eight Xboxes all, <laughs> all yep. right through. Well, that that was actually uh, one of the games that, that uh, I, I say, inspired me to start multiboxing. Um, it was Gra, Quake Four, and Gears were the th- the big three. Gears got me into it because there was I I had boosted I joined a boosting session with somebody who was like oh yeah I have I have three boxes or two boxes or whatever and we're like oh yeah we're like a, all a group of multi boxers and I'm like you can do that <laughs> 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 what and and there it began. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. And I guess, and then the last thing that I'm kind of known for that I also recently kind of got pulled back into is uh, um, the uh, the rock band, rock band bots slash PBAE hmm. project yep. um, that I kind of what you know kind of spearheaded that and messing around with the uh, the MIDI Pro adapter and basically making scripts for playing back rock band drum songs that expanded to more and more and got more people involved too. So there was a little kind of group that, that fired up recently kind of looking at cracking the last couple of things that were loose ends when I kind of got out of that and ran out of time to work on it. So that's been kind of cool too. I had just introduced my kids to Guitar Hero uh, I, I, you know, with quarantine, like, you know, how are you going to keep mm-hmm. a 10 year old and a, or a well, 12 year old and a 10 year old entertained? So I was like, you guys got it. You should Guitar check this Hero. out. You should check this out. This was like huge when I was younger. And so we busted this thing out. And my son was like, you know, we, I put him on easy and I was playing on, I think it was on medium at this point or whatever, but just, we were just jamming out, having fun. And he was like, this sucks. This is <laughs> what? because he couldn't get it. He couldn't figure it out. Uh, he was so frustrated. Oh, okay. And I was like, no, you're not quitting just because it's too hard. I've watched you play Fortnite and you can, you know, 90 degree build all day. Like, I'm not letting you give up on easy on this. Just give it some time. Take a few runs. And so then we finally made it through a song. I think he did like two in a row. And he was like. This is super fun. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. And there's no way that, like, video games haven't changed that much no. between now and then, right? No. Like, Guitar Hero is still great. It was super And, fun. I mean, that's got to be, like, I must have started playing Guitar Hero when I was probably, yeah, like, like 13 or 14 or something. So, probably not, not too far off of his age. Yeah. Man, it makes me feel old. It, yeah. <laughs> I, I just had my 40th birthday, so it's uh, super old. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you're, and you're quite a bit older than me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, old man Terrigan, uh, do you you still play? I think you are best known for playing Elite Dangerous for whatever reason. You still do that? No, <laughs> in, in a word, um, no. I kind of. Um, I think we had the big long uh, journey. It was, to it was a running. It was a running thing. We basically were going across the unit like the galaxy and coming back. Um, we finished that. And I started doing some other sort of wrap-up work. Um, the problem is that the achievements I've got left in there, like I've done pretty much everything I want to do in the game. It's just the achievements that are left in the game require so much grinding of work. It's like not fun anymore. <laughs> so, uh, like, and they've actually just made this one harder. There's um, there's an achievement in there called Triple Elite, um, and that's getting elite in trading, exploration, and combat. Uh Trading and exploration are actually pretty straightforward and actually relatively easy to get. So I've got those. The combat one, yeah, that, that requires a lot of work. Um, it's essentially you're building up XP over time to go up these ranks. Um, and the high, like the more you go up in rank, um, the less the ships you kill are worth. So basically once you're getting onto like the second last rank before elite, um, you can only shoot like elites and um, ships on your own level. Otherwise you're getting no XP at all. So it, it means the range of ships that you've got to, to like, kill, uh, there's less of them. So it's harder to find them in the first place. And they're also giving you less relative XP than they would um, otherwise. So, so it just becomes really grindy. Like, and I think I'm, I'm close. I mean, like, the 80%, I think, to get to the rank just below Elite. But I've, that, to get through that, I've still got to kill, like, you know, 300 or 400 elite class enemies just to get to elite from there and i'm just like 
and I, I mean, I'm really big on combat anyway so I've kind of like I put it down for a while and there's also another one they dropped um, carriers so basically humongous ships that you can buy um, but they cost humongous amounts of money so of course you have to just grind for money and money's not necessarily the easiest of things to get they usually have like they'll have a bug or something like that and there's like a gold rush and everybody runs to that and gets all this money and then they patch the bug and it's like yeah everybody's poor for a while um so it was either wait for a gold rush or grind lots and lots of money and so i was just doing these things which is just like grinding this or grinding kills and i'm just like i'm not having fun <laughs> so, can, can you go into um, reddit and manipulate the market to get a gold rush in elite is that um does it work like that no <laughs> no i don't think they're not on the stock market unfortunately ah, so. bummer <laughs> yeah it's uh it doesn't quite work oh they're not in dogecoin anyway um yeah, uh, so yeah, I've kind of put Elite down for a while, and I'm not quite sure when I'll come back. They're gonna um, they're gonna release uh, what's sort of a colloquial called Elite Feet, which is basically um, uh, getting out of your ship and walking around. So they're basically having third person camera view of your actual pilot, um, which is a big change because the game has been all just you're sitting in a cockpit doing your thing. Um, that's it's called Odyssey. That's coming out later this year, I think. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really that inspired <laughs> like it's not really exciting me that much so i don't yeah. know i guess i'm i'm post elite um i guess is what that comes down to i've 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 spent my time and oh boy, boy did i spend a lot of time in that game <laughs> um <laughs> uh yeah it was, it was a funny thing actually when the series x came out um and they've got like quick resume and so i was basically i was just going in there and just doing like a few little runs for money just trying to build up cash for the um for the uh, carrier um that's fine i went and do that did a couple of runs of that and then okay i'll go play something else and i come back and then quick resume the game right and it's back at the menu log in sign into the game that's fine uh but for some reason the game was like running at like four times speed and i was going wow this is like really quick to get to this thing and i'm like doing this hyperspace jump and it's getting there really quickly and i'm then zooming to this place really quickly this is like this is awesome <laughs> like I think the game was actually fun again because i wasn't like basically sitting there doing nothing for half the time um and it turns out what's happening there um because it's a, it's an online service as a game um what's happening there is that the game has lost its clock so it thinks it's actually way behind um so it's it has an internal clock that it uses to sync with the servers um uh-huh. when you go into quick go into like it goes on into background so it goes and saves its state when it comes back up again, it still thinks it's so far behind the server. So what's actually doing is running the clock faster in order to catch up with where reality is. That's which hilarious. Is quite, yeah, so um, and it's, it's a known problem with the game. Um, but yeah, it just had that really interesting side effect of like, I, I, I think I'd left it off for two days, came back to it, and it just had like catch up two days worth of time. But they did that by running everything really quickly. But what, what was interesting to me was like a lot of the excuses for things being slow, say um, transitioning from one system to another, like as a hyperspace jump, um, that has a set amount of time in the game. Um, when it's on quad speed, that set amount of time is really, really quick, which just says to me they don't need to be loading at that time. That's been their excuse for that time is that they sure. need to load and generate the things. No, you don't. <laughs> it's just arbitrary. At this point, yeah, now it's just arbitrary because the game can obviously run a lot quicker than that. Um, yeah. and it would be a lot more fun if you did, guys. You know, anyway. Wink, um, wink. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm half tempted if I'm going to go back into grinding that just to like basically put it into like freeze for like a couple of days and come back and then just do like some runs and I'll be really quick. I wonder how long <laughs> so, you can so, let it go. So could you could you like fight somebody where they move at normal speed and you move at four times speed so they can't hit you? I'm not sure how it would work. I, I played in solo, so I'm not sure how it would work um, in full multiplayer. I think once you oh, actually... I see. Yeah, I think it only it only did the time lapse stuff when you were in like uh, moving between planets. Um, so I think it's, it's the word for it is is um, escaping me. There's hyperspace moving between systems, and then there's like fast travel between um, like systems internally. Um, I think if you actually got into combat, it wouldn't be that speed. But I'm not sure. Um, I know that might, that might be a nice right. little exploit for your, uh, your elite <laughs> ship kills. Yeah, I've got a feeling it'd be more like, and I'm going to lo- lining up the shot. These oh, he's gone. And I'm lining up the shot. And oh, he's gone. Okay, um, I can't turn quick enough. For the, uh, where is he? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, now I'm dead. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I wonder how it would actually work in multiplayer. Because um, if you're running behind and your clock speeds like ticking faster than everybody else's, whether it would actually do something weird with the net yeah, it might it might just disconnect you. It might just be like, oh, you're too far out of sync. Bye. Yeah. Go sync up again. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, that that's elite. I'm I'm I will probably go back to it and do bits of it, but I'm I'm finding other things very distracting at the moment, <laughs> probably for obvious reasons. Yeah, I can see that. You want to talk about those, or you want to save save those for later? Ah, uh, save them for later. Um, Perfect. I guess uh, let's let's talk about framing frame. <laughs> yeah, have you seen? So I don't know if anyone has caught that on the random to do list. Uh, <laughs> flavor text but yep. you know that's it that's a relic from days past where it says didn't freem whatever the achievement was and and i'm not sure how many people in your community know what freeming an achievement is not probably very few i'd say yeah. they, have, they would have had to have been listening to z to z and they would have had to have been listening to during a particular era when you you yeah you did, you did the say, thing even even in z to z like i'd say that's probably one of the more niche terms and and things that we yeah it was i believe (laughs) february uh i can't remember the year it's whenever roblox first came out because that was the game Uh, was roblox i was wondering whether it was roblox Roblox. or whether it was um like rayman you i know you're working on the dailies in rayman as well yep nope it was uh it was roblox and because of uh, those of you who have not completed roblox there is an achievement for playing five consecutive days 10 consecutive days and 20 consecutive days and i went for that 20 consecutive day one eh, like four times i think uh and and what what freeming a game is is when you're trying to get a streak of days in a row playing and whoops you just break your streak for no reason because you couldn't play a game um, yeah, I thought the uh, the actual uh, the official definition was getting to day nineteen and then missing the twentieth. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and and so. yeah. So uh, that's where that term came from. And, and my yep. gaming time still really has not improved. I guess it has to some extent now that my kids are older and uh, they are also involved in gaming. But actually, my newest issue is what's happening is like I didn't know my daughter would be as into games as she is, and I certainly wasn't going to spend uh, a th- enough money for a third Xbox Live account. So I was like, you know what? Listen, I'm not going to play Fortnite, so go ahead and use my tag. You can play Fortnite. Do whatever you want. Well, now she's bought a ton of stuff and has earned uh. a bunch of stuff on it. And it's like, <laughs> well, now I can't transfer all that stuff over. So if she wants to play, she's got to use my account. So it's like, uh, well, okay. yep. thankfully, dun, dun. I can use my laptop, but like I... You know, I, I got kicked off of xCloud once. So I just went a little Splay the Spire, and then all of a sudden my daughter wants to play, and so <laughs> boom, I'm gone. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do have a gamer tag for her, but it's like she can't play online. So it's like, yeah, she doesn't want to play that. Um, so I think the last thing that I've framed um, – I well, I have two answers. Okay, so uh, the the the, the – Probably the most recent one is the uh, daily Microsoft rewards. Um, uh, yeah, the treasure chest for your your rewards. I could not keep a seven day streak alive to save my life. Now I, I'm in a nice rhythm. I'm up to 141 days, so I'm cruising. Um, <laughs> but I think I broke about seven streaks before that. Uh, trying to keep those things going. That's easy. But in terms of gaming. I actually do have an answer for this, and it was, uh, it was window the uh, Microsoft Sudoku Windows 8 version. I was uh, I had the Windows 8 version installed on my computer, uh, which is you know is a a Windows 10 device, uh, but they hadn't updated it, and so I was like, I was clicking right along, clicking right along. I had all my uh, my months going, and the game updated. And I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to get the old version back. So Dude, everything so shifted over of... to UWP, and I'm like, "Get yep. out of here! Are you kidding no. me?" <laughs> and so I was just, I, it was over. I was like, "Well, I guess I'll never get these three achievements." Oh, bummer. Um, then when the news for the, because I, I went onto the forums and, and poked around, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you just reload that old patch, and you should be able to go back and do it." I tried it for the life of me, couldn't get it to work. Um, it just wasn't happening for whatever reason. So I gave up on it. And then the casual game servers, of course, closing here in April, uh, got me thinking again, like, ah, you know what? Maybe I just kick the tires one more time and just go and see. Maybe I can actually do that. And that was uh, kind of mid-January. 
and some dude sent me the the the, the entire file, like the, the 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 patch that is you know up into um, the point at which it transitions over, and so. I just have to essentially reinstall it every day because my computer will automatically update to the Windows <laughs> yeah. UWP version. But so I would every day would do that, and I went ahead and spent the last half of January clock adjusting to get all my bronze and gold medals and then lined it up here for February and just played it naturally in February, which, the beautiful thing, it was on my RTDL Terrigan, the fact that you hmm. included just recently <laughs> PC games and that thing popped up, so not only do I get a completion, a nice high ratio go for gold completion, I just hit that today. It was awesome. So I'm super happy about that. So the last game I framed was that one, but ultimately I came out on top with a completion. Um, so that sounds like a uh, – it wasn't, necess- wasn't really a frame. That was more a technical frame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 got me. Um, any if anyone in this community actually is looking for that uh, that patch, uh, reach out to me. I can send it to you. Uh, I have it downloaded. The the dude who is in the forums too. Uh, I mean, he he's happy to give it to you. He's got a Dropbox. You just pull it from. But I'd be happy to send it to you as well if you're looking to clean those things up because before they go down in uh, in April. Yeah. April. Mm. Uh, so I'm happy. Not very long, I, so yeah. that. No, it isn't very long. But again, you can clock adjust. Um, Till, till you're blue in the face. So uh, that's that was the, the 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 last game that I uh, technically framed. Um, <laughs> Speaking what? of streaks, though, um, there's been a in Achievement Hounds 101. There's actually a they have like a streak challenge each year, I think. Um, and this year's one was kind of intriguing to me because it's basically get the most number of five day streaks. Yeah. Um, and that sort of, I wasn't usually that interested, but it kind of, um, the uh, skeptical Mario kind of upped the ante and offered a $250 prize. <laughs> so I went, yeah, I could probably do that. Um, so I'm currently doing that. I'm breaking my streak every every fifth day, um, which is interesting. <laughs> so I'm it kind is of wild. For, forcibly, forcibly, forcibly framing. Well, not really. Um, what what so do you do it's on those ca- off days? Uh I don't know. I'm still working that out. Um, I actually get a lot of housework done, so it's quite. Oh, you actually don't game, like you don't no, want don't, to even I, risk I, it. I, no, I don't want to risk it. The only thing I do will just boot up, and I'll get the um, Game Pass quest thing done. So just start a Game Pass game and oh, do sure. the um, do the phone thing, and that's it. Um, I pretty much don't play anything, or if I do, I play on Switch or something like that. Um, okay. But yeah, I just do not do not want to risk getting anything kind of accidental. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that, but actually having the every sixth day off has been kind of positive in some ways um, sure. because it just shows shows to me that like actually gaming is kind of my default if i don't know what i'm going to do i just go and game um but the side effect of that is is that other things that i would want to do like pick up guitar or learn something or those those things that kind of have a bit more um uh what's the word there's a bit more of a, a commitment barrier to, to entry yeah it's it's not something you just want to you can just pick up and do it's um having that enforced break actually has made me start picking up those things. Um, so I think it's actually been a positive thing if it's only, if, if for a frivolous reason. <laughs> so yeah, uh, pretty cool. I'm enjoying you know, it. it. It's, it's funny you mentioned that because that was kind of part of my, uh, you know, stepping back and looking at, at how I game and things like that too. And I, I have done, I mean, it's, it's not quite as formal as that, but it is the same thing where gaming is kind of the default unless you force yourself to do something else outside of it and i've been i've been doing that it's I, i've been kind of not off track the last month or so but um you know for the last i mean probably probably more than a year at this point of kind of actively doing other things outside of gaming yeah and I, I i had to do that myself i went through um I had a bit of a breakdown probably a couple of years ago, um, and a lot of that revolved around. It was actually around when I was getting my 500k, um, and I was really pushing myself a lot on gaming in general, and I just overstretched. I think, um, and I wasn't. I was using it as a kind of a coping thing as well, and it obviously it wasn't working. Um, so I kind of had just had to stop, and I basically just stopped gaming completely. Um, 
like certainly not, nothing gamer score related and I almost basically stopped gaming completely for, for several months um, and didn't really get back into gamer score at all for at least another year I think um, so I think having a break is definitely a good thing um, particularly if you're finding yourself sort of doing it obsessively <laughs> which yeah. I think mm-hmm. I was getting into um, and certainly if it's getting in the way of doing other things that you might want to do that might actually be more positive um, yeah, maybe just have a think about it and readjust what you're doing because um, it, it's, it's, it's all fun in games but um, sometimes it can be like hiding other problems and other things going on for sure for sure i i mean I, you know i think we've all kind of grown and you know certainly with you know you had said it earlier with the with the rats and the zits and the you know all these easy gamer scores I mean, ga- gamer scores are kind of meaningless um hmm. you know it there's so much easier it so has much easier it has get. and and so you know chasing that number is isn't really as enticing as it as it once was there's there's much less of a rarity to it um you know and i for me it's and i've always had this kind of approach because i I know i can't compete on a high level in terms of gamer score and things like that so i've always been about experiences and and unfortunately i i would you know because i i fancy myself a completionist uh you know within reason I would tend to like set these things up with like, oh yeah, I'll get back to that, or I'll do that, and, I'll, and I've had all these things just hanging out there, and it's like, you know what? I'm I'm bypassing all these other experiences because I mm. think for some reason I'm gonna play a hundred multiplayer matches of Gears of War. <laughs> like, get out of here! I am yeah. done with that. Just give me the campaign and move on. Um, you know, and, What's, and uh, what do you what do you call that? You've you've got a term for when you you put those games to bed? Retire them. Yeah, yeah. I, I retire the games, and so yeah, I've got a retirement list going. I'm actually tracking and just seeing how I do this year. You know, one of my biggest focuses it started last year, and it's been continuing this year, although it, it's modified a little bit, is just cleaning up the tag and, and focusing on just dialing in on a game for a month and getting rid of it. And, and you know, in January – into February here was was Hitman Absolution. I've had that game on my tag for twenty five hundred days. Uh, that's like seven years, and I finally went back. <laughs> that's that's baby completion. Okay, it, it pretty much is. <laughs> but you know, I had to do the hard play. No, 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 no. Ba- baby completion as in like start to finish number of days. Oh, 2,500? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's nothing. So, so I still uh, haven't finished my first game. That's funny. There's um, um there is actually a. a, a a forum thread on true achievements somewhere where um they have a list of people who uh, have taken the long longest time between starting a game and finishing a game um and there's a various bunches of people have gone oh yeah i started this on you know this and it's been like four thousand nine hundred days since i did this and it's like and i was looking at that list and going hmm i got my console on my birthday in 2006 <laughs> um let's see okay i haven't finished Gore. i'm not going to do well, get, no, gears of war i'm not going to do that Hmm. Saints Row. <laughs> I started Saints Row on the fifth of October two thousand and six. Oh um, my! Yeah. So that'd be a like it's fifty five hundred days or something like that if I went and finished it now. The funny thing is, is if the longer I wait, the longer that time. <laughs> goes. Yeah, so it's it like, just keeps. I don't going want up. to finish it. Well, yep. <laughs> that, that's that's the thing I'm thinking too. Is, is is I would like to go back and do and finish Sonic 06 to to see how many days it is. But yeah, like you said, I mean, when you finish it, then you don't have it anymore. It's over. Yep. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so after Hitman, I um the 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 better completions matter contest said, hey, for February. Why don't you finish Enslaved Odyssey to the West? It's like, all right, let's do it. Uh, of course, I had to buy the Pigsies DLC, which has absolutely never gone on sale. Uh, still isn't, so I paid full price for it or whatever. But I just finished that uh, last week, and that game was 2,500 days on my tag. Uh, so it's it's for me, it's shifted to like, okay, listen, I love the random to-do list, and, and I do the scavenger mode. And and I you know I it, it fits nicely with my gaming because I don't have to pinpoint an achievement. It's like, hey, play this game, get as many achievements as you can in a night, and hope for the best. Uh, so yeah. the scavenger mode for people who aren't familiar is where it hides the actual achievements and only shows you the game, and it will show the achievements in uh, ratio order. Right. So and you basically have to play a guessing game to work out what the achievements are and narrow it down based on the um, on the ratio. Yep. 
So uh, I was I was talking to Terrigan at, be- at the beginning of this uh, before we started recording, and on there is Geometry Wars Two, or Retro Evolved, and the way that the ratio lines up is that it has to be the Smile achievement because it is my twenty fourth uh, achievement in our random to do list. So it has to be Smile, and so I've been just picking it up and playing that every now and again, trying to eh, maybe I'll crack it this time. I absolutely hate that. Uh, I mean, I love twin stick shooters, but I am so bad at them. So bad, and they're so frustrating. Um, and you know, and like I think my twenty fifth one is golf with friends. That's doing a par course on any of them. Like who knows what that is? So it's like oh, maybe I'll just <laughs> maybe I'll try space station today. Maybe I'll try Oasis today. Um, also incredibly frustrating, but it fits nicely with my gaming because it, it it doesn't force me to do anything in particular. Um, like I picked mm. up Katana Zero uh, last night. And it was like, all right, well, one of them is to beat the story, so I guess I'll do that. And then well, I'll pick it up again and, and maybe get a couple of these and see what happens. Um, you know, and, and I can just enjoy it at a more casual level. But then... Yeah, I found this with Warboats, actually. Uh, as I went into Warboats and I actually specially set up my collection to basically just have a bunch of you know, easy crap in there so I could do it. Um, and I realized just how much I don't enjoy targeted achievements anymore yeah. like um it's, it's and this was the problem i had with when i was doing a lot of bean diving as well so bean diving being starting new games um you just don't really appreciate the game anymore you're not really nope. playing the game you are just going for a specific achievement and doing the minimum you can possibly do to get to that um and i i just don't find any value in that anymore um no. Absolutely not. Uh, and for for bean diving in particular, I mean, it bumps up your your, your game count on true achievements. It's, it bumps up a stat, um, and if all you care about is a stat, that's great. But I play games to enjoy them as well. So the fact that I was spending a lot of my time at that point, I was just trying to dive as many games as I possibly could, pretty much constantly. Um, I just wasn't playing games, and I wasn't yeah. having fun. Well, um, and the other thing too that you run into, and this is a constant issue that I have, is. You, you, you know, if you if you just chip away at games or, like, these things kind of pop up and you go onesie twosies on mm, every mm. month, you forget how to play. It's, yeah, and then it's like, well, now you're at the end game and you don't even remember how to pull your sword out or, or any, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, I've, this I've is had this, I had this exact problem. Um, uh, both Mass Effect Andromeda and I think Assassin's Creed 3 turned up in Game Pass quests. Yeah. And I thought, huh. They're two games that I put down ages ago and that I know I like, was going to go back to and complete at some point. Um, so Mass Effect Andromeda, I did the, the Game Pass quest, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to actually run through it again. And game, like Mass Effect, the, the thing I had to do with Mass Effect was basically do a complete run of the game. So that wasn't so bad because I could start from scratch and I could relearn yep. all of the things that happened in the game. That's yep. fine. Um, and I got through and actually did the completion on that, which was good. Some of the multiplayer stuff's really buggy and annoying, but I got, got all that done. Um, then I went and picked up Assassin's Creed 3, and I've, I've completed the entirety of the main game. There was only like two achievements left, which was like doing all of the optional mission condition stuff. Um, sure. And then there was all the DLC. So I've got the, had the DLC for ages, the, um, the tyranny of George Washington. Mm-hmm. Um, I started that DLC and thought, okay, how bad could it be? Turns out pretty bad because I have <laughs> no idea how to play that game anymore. Yep. So yeah, um, I, I actually recently played that as well, and the DLC in particular was extra annoying. I thought I I had a really hard time getting through it, even after just finishing the main game. Yeah, really. Yeah, I've heard of somebody else on um, AH101 sort of mentioned it as well. Just like the the conditions, particularly for episode two, like the optional mission conditions were just really bad. So yeah. I don't know. I, I want to go back and complete it. I actually just want to play that DLC because I heard it was actually pretty decent. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm, I'm tossing up whether I feel passionately enough about it to go back and do like right. the full completion on that. Um, the thing about that game is I completed every single Assassin's Creed up to that point. Um, every yeah. single one. All of the multiplayer. And I've actually got all the multiplayer in Assassin's Creed 3 as well. So if I completed that, that would be kind of a nice, a nice little sort of bookend on my, my experiences with Assassin's Creed before I kind of stopped caring about it after like 4 or everything after that. Right. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, in, I'm, at, I'm stuck at Assassin's Creed 3 as well. I, I restarted after I lost my save because of the stupid Portuguese language pack or whatever the hell it was. Um and I started back up, and I got got back to the point where I lost my save. And yeah, that's the next one. And you know, 
for the Achievement Hunting 101 community, it is, this is the year of Assassin's Creed, so they're trying to get as, through as many campaigns and stuff as possible. And it's, it's one of those, you know, I have a list, I have a hit list of games. It's 120 games, and I've separated them into like, uh, like 30 categories. And one of them is Assassin's Creed. Right, I, I'm allowing myself one Assassin's Creed game, and and I need to either get it to retirement age or complete it, and and, mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm on Assassin's Creed right now, and it's easy. Once that's done, then I move on to Assassin's Creed Four. You know, um, and 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 it's so it's encouraging me. It keeps showing up on my random to do list because it's like, hey, this is what's next. Come on, here we go. Uh, you know, until one of these months, I'm just gonna have to sit down and just go whole hog on it and and see what happens. Uh, get its retirement age and 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 put her put her out to pasture. Put her on an iceberg and send them send them away. So which which one are you up to? Uh, which you mean Assassin's Creed three? Yes, yeah, three or are yeah, you? It's okay. three. That's what I'm stuck three. on. Okay. Yep. And I I just yeah, got uh, fit, I, every every time I made it, I got to the late title card. I got rid of uh, Edward or whatever his name is, Edmund, whatever the ten away guy is. Um, yeah, I've I, I started that game over because I'd completely forgotten. I've even completely oh, forgotten the plot. <laughs> other than, <laughs> you, other, other than yeah, there's the the bait and switch with the Templar yep. and, at the beginning, but that's about all I really remembered from it. Such I, it, a late it was actually, title card. <laughs> yeah, um, the that game I think actually got a lot of criticism, um, particularly about the protagonist, which I think was a bit unfair because I actually quite enjoyed the game as i remember it yeah i um, i like the i mean i i'm not a fan of assassin's creed at all but i i quite enjoyed the 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 plot and premise in in that one i don't like the gameplay but that's not exclusive to that assassin's creed that's just the series as a whole yeah uh so what else are you guys up to what uh i mean this kerrigan what what else you you uh you do with your your time now that uh you know, you're not you're not recording shows as much. Uh, you know, I guess we talked about some of the games. W- what's your plans for the like the rest of the month? You got anything that you're working on in particular? Uh, oh, right now, um, I sort of have a on again off again relationship with Magic: The Gathering, the card game. Mm. Um, so my my interest has been peaked again in the last little bit, and so I'm obviously spending way too much money on cards again. Um, so and you're, you, and you're uh, talking, did, like, did you physical play... cards, right? Like, Yes, physical cards, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I've... okay. I was going to say, did you play the Arena Open this weekend? No. Um, I haven't... Well, unfortunately, Arena is not available on, um, on I, like, iOS devices, and I'm not even sure it's available on Mac, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I've just I never had anything that's... Think, I think it did eventually come out on Mac, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, but I'm not 100%. Yeah, I just have I haven't chased it, and also the whole whole premise of having to like collect cards again. I'm just like, nah, <laughs> I've got real. Cards. Well, just uh, just play limited, you know, yeah. then it's okay. The thing is, limited is my least my least favorite game type, so it's kind of like, oh, eh. okay, well then yeah. then yeah, don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been basically I've I've been big into Commander. I don't know if you you know what that is. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 that's that's the one I don't touch. So okay. <laughs> I do know what it is. I do know yeah. what it is. And I know it's extremely popular, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, I, that, it, that one's not for me. Yeah, it's the the most popular format of um, of uh, Magic nowadays, um, and it's essentially a more casual kind of big things happen kind of game and much multiplayer and there's also okay. yeah there's a bunch of rules around it it's a lot of fun um but i've been basically just looking through them i've actually been spending a lot of time just cataloging my cards because i don't really know what i have so sure. i was like going okay well i want to build that deck but i don't I've got, I've got some of those cards but i don't really know so um so I've basically just been going through and scanning all the cards and working out what i have and that's a very long slow laborious process um and i'm up it to sure about is. i'm up to about <laughs> six thousand cards cataloged um, and what was really surprising to me was um, getting the estimated value of all of those cards. It started making me think I needed to get insurance. <laughs> so those, <laughs> the, the cards, I mean, they're pushing like um, estimated value is somewhere between like eight and a half, nine thousand US now, and it's just like, geez. Jeez, wow. And and I don't, I don't, and I don't even have, I don't have like any of the super super valuable cards. That's just that's aggregate. Um, and of course, because I've been playing on and off over the years, I've gotten like I've just rares that I've pulled out of packs like five years ago or something like that. And now that they're out of print and people want them, they're like fifty bucks. I'm like, sheesh. Yeah. Um, well, yep. 
Mm. And just a bunch of surprise cards in there that are just like really high value. So it's sort of, and yeah. that, that just adds up. So yeah. Well, I've, I've, it, it's, it's funny you say that too, because before, I mean, this is probably, po- yeah, this had to have been post set to said, I bought a collection from somebody uh, that, that played in my local stores for, it was just, it was his dump box, basically. He, you mm. know, he used to, he used to draft like four or five days a week um, and then slowed down later on, but still drafted regularly and just didn't care he, they weren't sorted they weren't anything so it was just base. it was mostly commons and uncommons few few kind of like bulk rares and stuff in there i bought it from from for 15 dollars. the box was so big it took two of us to get it into my car <laughs> like it was so de- heavy that that's definitely worth more um, than 15 even oh yeah he he just wanted me to get, he just wanted to get rid of it like yeah. he he was like basically giving it away like you know he he was like here you you i know you sell cards give me 15 bucks is like to buy his draft basically it was like yep. buy me a draft and you can have it um so i sorted through the whole thing um and it's on uh, it's cra- amazing how how many cards like even just a couple years old like uncommons or, or you know like dollar uncommons things like mm. that i sold tons of them um at the end from all of my limited play i i, I basically sold my entire collection before i moved to california about a year ago and um so that was just from playing limited like my my personal limited play locally plus that collection that i bought from him i estimated about twenty thousand cards that i i sold before i moved and it's unreal to see how big that is and how long it takes to sort them (laughs) that's crazy (laughs) yeah i was like i'm I'm not even when i'm sorting through my cards i like i already have them sort of pre-sorted like i've got a pile like i've got two big boxes with like four rows each but that's just like singletons like i've only got one of each card in that particular mm-hmm. set and they're divided into the colors i've then got another six or eight box like boxes like just full of commons and uncommons that's just I don't know, i'm not going to even bother <laughs> trying to catalog those yeah i, I will tell you from sorting that collection commons are not worth your time even yep. if, even if there was a five dollar common in like one out of 20 sets not worth it it yep. they, I would say almost a hundred percent of the time commons are absolutely worthless. And even if they are assigned a value, like, like even if they're like 25 cents, 50 cents or whatever on like TCG player or whatever selling site, totally, you'll never totally sell them. You'll it. never sell them for that. Yeah. It is the commons were a complete waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. My, uh, I've gotten into D and D actually like real oh, really? legit. Yeah. Group, uh, group of buddies of mine started it up during quarantine here and, just been trying to learn fifth edition and so see what so happens socially socially distanced uh, D&D yep. or yep. yeah <laughs> just just which it's it's actually are you cool doing, because are you doing zoom D D? are you actually doing it in person no it's it's google meets we're doing it and it's 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 cool because like so we're wrapping up our, our our first campaign here and i've written my own campaign and and i've created some maps and stuff but like because it's all online i can share my screen mm-hmm <laughs> Which would have all the maps and stuff, and I can use, I can cloud it, and I can do all that kind of stuff. And so, like, it's actually would be a, it's a better experience online. But I, I do look forward to when we can actually get in person and do some longer sessions. But you know, we just do like a couple hours every week, and it's been great because I've been able to, to to see my buddies who I never get to see, and you know, have this uh, this fun uh, shared role playing experience. Um, so that's been my outside of gaming thing that I've I've picked up recently, which super rewarding. It's so much fun. Yeah, I've been um, tempted actually to get back into role playing a bit because I've got a, a my my ex partner's new partner is a D and D nerd, and so we've been hanging out a bit. Um, so it's potentially I might get back into role playing, but I haven't actually done real role playing for fifteen years or something like that. I think and I I never game. did. I, all I'd like to do was create characters. And I literally would do that and never do anything with him. I was like, oh, this guy got a really nice role. Okay, I don't know what that means, but boy, look at his stats really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at him. He's, he's <laughs> real cool. That's the extent of what I would do. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun catching up, guys. Is there anything yeah, else uh, so, I mean, you want to yeah, I mean, touch I, on I, before I, we get out of here? Us- Aside of magic, yeah, I was going to bring up something. So you know, you know, back back in the the kind of tail end of Z to Z, you know, I was kind of dabbling with my my joke my joke game Big Breaks. So you guys remember that? That's one? right. Yep. So, well, well, while after that, uh, my new creative outlet became uh, became making a game, uh, a real game, kind of. Okay. 
kind of kind of um so i i did i i picked up i got a a couple of books on unreal 4 and i started learning blueprint and i i went in with a goal and i achieved that goal uh my goal was to well i i missed a step there i assessed the how realistic said goal was (laughs) that I determined it was possible and then then did this. Uh, my goal was to faithfully recreate plumbers don't wear ties. And I assume you guys probably know what that is, right? Uh, I have no idea. I don't. Really? It's an old like Flash game or something? You guys don't know what plumbers don't... Oh, okay, well, anyway, it's barely... <laughs> now, I'll say this. Remember, it's we're barely old. a game. Well, so is this. <laughs> it's 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 an icon. Okay, it's it's a uh, a really 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 notoriously bad game. Uh, it's basically a slideshow that you sort of interact with once in a while. But so like a visual uh, novel. Yeah, exactly. It, it's a it's a visual <laughs> novel before visual novels that came out on CDI. Okay. So, yeah, it's uh, it's very very bad and very very basic. Which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I, it's, it, you know, it's something. It's something. I don't have to create any art assets. Uh, I I have all of those already. Um, it's something that is achievable in a reasonably small amount of time. And it's you know, it, it's kind of funny because I I love it as a, as a really great bad game. So I set out to create that, and I did. Um, and I mean, I was never able to release it. Of course, I don't own the rights to it right um but that that's been that's been really cool and i i've kept on with that um so yeah that's kind of my new creative outlet is is making games i have a couple of game ideas that i i do eventually over a long period of time most likely want to uh want to kind of pursue and make but i've been i've been trying to learn uh learn c plus plus in unreal now it's awesome which (laughs) is which is uh it's it's tough it's real tough but it's it's fun, you know. I I've like I said, I kind of mentioned earlier in this in the show. I've been kind of slacking lately because I've been looking for jobs and some other stuff. But um, it's uh, it, it's pretty cool, and and yeah, I got to I got to finally make make a game, start to finish. It was it was a uh, very frustrating, <laughs> but very satisfying at the same time. I ended up having to, so I was able to extract all the assets and all the timing and stuff out of the original. But I wasn't okay. able to get. I wasn't able to get the font. There is a font for the score. Okay. And I had to redraw it from scratch. <laughs> so that that was uh, surprisingly difficult. It. I think it took me two two days of my like regular kind of like work on game time, of just to make the font. And it was only the letters that I needed because I didn't need the whole alphabet. I only needed a few letters. Sure. That's funny. And it was it was a <laughs> yeah that was that was kind of a nightmare. But and then I I briefly through through other kind of circles I've been hanging out in people got word of that and it ended up leading to uh, I I talked to a publisher that specializes in acquiring old IPs about publishing it, oh. um, which which was which was cool. Yeah, but cool. Yeah, I was, was going to say maybe you could get in touch with the United Pictures or whatever. Just <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny because I did a lot of digging on them, but they don't exist <laughs> as far as I can tell. Um, so I wonder who but, has uh, the IP. Yeah, so the funny thing with that actually is so, so yeah, I, I talked to this publisher and they weren't, I, I, I had found a lead, I gave it to them, you know, he did some digging and they, we, you know, both came up empty basically that, you know, it's gone, you know, it's gone right like it's i mean if you really wanted it you could probably find more but like you know it's too much work to be worth it basically practically abandoned where at this point yeah exactly but that being said really recently like a couple of months ago um something came up that i'm i'm pretty sure the rights have been acquired and Mm. a and it is actively in development of a remaster (laughs) <laughs> I, you, I reached yeah. I, I reached out to the person to see if they were interested in my version but i didn't hear back so you know it's and i i had no expectation going in of any of that happening i had no intention of re- you know releasing it or anything like that but it, it was just a it, it's it's a fun project it sounds like yeah it sounds like a lot of fun yeah it is it was yeah i'll have to check that out but anyway 
I'm just reading the Wikipedia yeah, definitely. thing and going, yeah, yeah it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, a bit it's, odd. <laughs> it is. It's a very interesting, very very interesting yeah. game. I ended up. I actually ported it to Android as well. Um, okay. I, I I built it, which was like seamless. Like I I didn't make any. I don't think I even had to make any input changes. I just had to do a couple of tweaks to get Unreal to compile for Android, and it just worked, which was hmm, nice. amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, so that, yeah, it was, it's a lot of fun. It was, it was a great learning experience, tons of fun. And yeah, now I'm I'm working on C++ stuff and eventually want to work on a real game of my own. But That's awesome. We'll see one day. One day, maybe. Personal growth. Might make it to Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that'd be Maybe fun. I'll, what I'll resurrect you, big rigs. You get to yeah, put your own <laughs> achievement names out there and stuff. That'll be yeah. be awesome. Uh, Terrigan, you know, typically you guys do community stuff. You got a bunch of stuff that you normally do. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's going I've, on in your community. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't even. Someone know myself, will clean that up, right? <laughs> Somebody will, yeah. Um, hey, we'll all the kick people it back who over to the stuff and all the people did some who stuff did and, cool stuff and there's. And Congrats. here's here's like a clue to the the challenge game thing challenge. Yeah, there'll be Someone a clue sing somewhere. Someone a song. Oh, that was at the beginning. Yep. Yeah, uh. <laughs> I do love your guys' songs. By the way, they're they're great. You guys do a really nice job with those. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. The ones I've ones I didn't write, they're really a lot of fun just to come up with a, a concept. Um, it's kind of difficult coming up with original concepts that you haven't sort of done before relating to like gaming yeah. and achievement hunting. Um, so that's it's, I find just the lyric writing side kind of fun. Did yeah, you? I, I submitted one. Yeah, it was I Ooh. think it was a year ago, Christmas. Okay, so it, it, I must. Have it was that, uh, but... it was Big Buck Hunter related. Okay, <laughs> I, I have yeah, the lyrics too. I don't even know, I, I, I don't even know your... what you guys are talking about. I haven't. <laughs> I, you know, I'll I'll, uh, oh, we, I'll um... shamefully admit I haven't heard the podcast before. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so the gimmick at the start of the, each show is basically, uh, at the very start, um, I would sing a song, um, but I would change the lyrics out to be something game-related. Um, and so without the music and just the vocals, um, the other uh, other people on the show had to work, like, guess what the song was. Yeah. Um, oh, I see. So you take an actual song, replace the lyrics with game lyrics and then yep. have people guess what yep, what exactly. the original was so there's, there's been a couple of variations on that but that's that's yeah. the crux of it so so for instance mine was i like big bucks and i cannot lie you <laughs> other hunters can't deny <laughs> and i mean i had the whole thing going but yeah that's so you get it you get how that works <laughs> Is that, was your brother who was the big buck hunter? Yes, champion. that that's yep. what. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say if he's if, I want, is he still uh, is he still at it? Yes, he is actually. He just got uh, third place this last year, and uh, in uh, what was that quarantine and everything? Like I got to watch him on Twitch, and uh, you uh-huh. know they uh, they were not great about wearing their masks. Uh, it turns <laughs> out you get a few. Uh, a few drinks in them, and and maybe uh, you start wearing chin diapers. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> well, you need, you need to be able to breathe freely when you're uh, when you're shooting those bucks. It's yeah. important. It's for, it's, it's for balance, and aim. It's important. <laughs> well, awesome guys! It's been so much fun uh, catching up with you guys again and and chatting. It's uh, it's been a really long time, and I want to thank. Yeah, it has. I just, know it has. It's, it's, <laughs> It's uh, kind of ridiculous how long it's been. Yeah, it was kind of funny um, just hearing Cranny come on the call and was like, how are you? Oh, I'm okay. I was like, yep, that's Cranny. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> that's right. That's right. exactly Just like goes. the old days. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, I guess, uh, you know, I'll just say, hey, that's going to be it for this episode. I want to thank everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. We had so much fun recording it. I have nothing to promote in terms of the Z to Z podcast because we're definitely not getting together to, it doesn't exist anymore. to redo this. <laughs> as much fun as this is, you know what? I'm sure at some point we will get together again. It may not be in this format. We may not hijack the Real Gamer Score show again, but uh, we'll certainly are around in this community. Uh, uh, Randy, so, is there any reason that you want people that could reach out to you? Any way that 
You want to? I mean, you can you can follow me on Twitter, I guess, if you want. I don't really post anything, but uh, I, I'm at Randy two seven two seven. Uh, maybe one day, if I if I ever eventually kind of learn C plus plus, I might make a game and post about it there. But that's uh, that's a long ways off. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think the most most active place I've seen you actually has been on the uh, the Cronus Titan. Um, Discord yeah, server. Y- yeah. I, I hang around Discord a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty quiet these days. <laughs> More of a lurker. <laughs> nice, Terrigan, What about you? Uh, well, I just wanted to care? wanted to announce. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just wanted to announce uh, Z to Z, which is that like with a two. So we're starting a new show, right? Right. There right? you go. Z two. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, um, Featuring yeah, Claptrap. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No. Um, yeah, nothing really to announce. Um, I will be on on the regular show sporadically, as usual. Um, but yeah, other than that, see me on Discord. It's probably the best place to get me. For sure. And uh, I'm Freemhole. Freemhole everywhere. I typically game alone. I play a lot of roguelikes these days. They're just perfect pick-up and play, uh, which in turn are all single-player games. So I'm not really doing anything with anybody. Um, but... Again, if you're interested in seeing retweets for contests, that's that's all you'll see on my Twitter page. <laughs> that is it. Literally, I'm just well, trying to get free uh, stuff. Yeah, and you, you can always uh, you know, people can always ping me on Discord too if you ever want to you want to talk about Gra or whatever. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm always around there. There you but, go. Uh, I did. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty quiet these days. Yeah, I guess I did. Last uh, episode I was on RGS, I did say if you had any contest ideas or whatever and wanted me to bother uh true achievements or terrigan about <laughs> setting these things up for our <laughs> communities um you know hey i'm still still open to ideas it's uh, it's all good so i guess with that we'll uh we'll see maybe maybe the rgs will pick up with this but i want to thank everybody who helped get us together uh way back in the day and for you know terrigan for kicking this idea back uh recently here so on behalf of Crandy and uh, and Terrigan, this has been Brandon. And to all you Achievement Hunters and Gamerscore Junkies out there, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you when we see you. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Thanks for having me. Zombie games.